Have you ever been driving through the South and all of a sudden you come upon a tree that's got like all of these bottles stuck on the limbs? It could be cobalt blue or they could be just a variety of colors. What is that about? <laughs> Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I am Lily, and um, this is going to be one of the series of Southern traditions. So grab a cup of coffee or tea, like I am, and let's get started. I love this one. Mom's Hotel. <laughs> Vacancy. Free Wi-Fi. I'm not even kidding about that. Let's go ahead and talk about this southern tradition of bottles now you may see this all over the place but it is really richly done in the south and some people just kind of think it's folk art which is kind of what it has turned into now but that is not where it started to go back to the origins when i was studying this i'm telling you it it went even back to, you know, 3000 BC. It was crazy. But I'm going to start in about the 9th century in the Congo. And this is, and of course, over in, um, dog just jumped right over the couch. Of course, they were all sitting still until I started this. Okay, so anyway, in the Congo and also in uh, Arabia and all those kind of lands, we had the story of the gin who would get trapped in the bottles, right? And actually glass goes back way further than I even thought. So once again, we're talking about the migration of people from Africa unwillingly to the United States um, and into the deep south. So with them again, they started bringing tradition here in the United States and in the South, it started in about the 17th century. There were these haints. We talked about that in my last video, What is Haint Blue? If you haven't seen that one, um, I will link it down below. And we have haints, ghosts, and furies. They're kind of like evil spirits. Like, you don't want to, that sounds bad. I don't want a fury around my house. I, I, I kind of want to be the only fury. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. But anyway, they believed that you could trap spirits. And so sometimes you will see the bottles on a tree limb, and sometimes you will see them hanging from the trees. Either way, the spirits are really, really attracted to bottles. I don't really understand why, but sometimes they would grease the top with like bacon fat. Now I wanna tell you, if, if you were gonna trap me, I mean, if I smell bacon, mm, I'm not gonna lie, I would probably be a little tempted. I mean, if there was a little taco truck in there, I'm gone. If I'm a fury, I see a taco truck, that's it. <laughs> Let me get my glasses on so I can see something. Okay, the hoodoo tradition, which is probably a little more prevalent in like New Orleans and place like, places like that, um, says that the bottles should always be placed at a crossroad because apparently crossroads attract spirits. I, I don't know. Are they looking for directions? Are like they talking to each other saying, hey, I just came from that way and you know, there's nothing down there. What well, I, I don't know, whatever. Over in Europe at the same time, they were creating the little glass balls, which are called witch balls or gazing balls. And sometimes you'll see them even in the garden stores. You know, I've seen tons of gazing balls. I don't have any gazing balls. I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm out on all that. Because we didn't have stained glass over here, um, the bottles were considered a poor man's stained glass. And so they would take like the blue bottles of milk and magnesia that were glass at the time. And you know, when you wash them up, they're really pretty. There are a lot of beverages right now that come in pretty green, blue, whatever glasses. Now, Probably Milk and Mag was the more popular, the more common to have. And they're that cobalt, beautiful cobalt blue. And sometimes you'll see trees just done all in blue um, somewhere out in the front yard. If you're not going to paint your house, you know, hate blue, then you better put some bottles in the yard, right? 
Now, if you're going to put them on a tree, they preferred the crepe myrtle tree. And that goes back to a biblical reference about freedom. So when the Furies or the Haints would pass by these bottles and they'd smell the bacon fat or even not, they would they would be attracted to the bottle. But apparently they get stuck in the bottle. So it's, you know, it's kind of like when you, when we put like the, the bee traps and the fly traps out with a Coke bottle. Have y'all ever done that? You cut off the bottom of a Coke, you know, plastic Coke bottle, turn it, turn it upside down and you put something sugary in there and like the flies go in and the bees go in, but they can't find their way out. I don't know. Apparently haints have the same problem. Bees and haints. So yeah, the furies get stuck in the bottle and then in the morning, when the morning sun comes out, it burns them up in the bottles because they're stuck there. And they don't know how to get out. So there you go. Another thing that they would do sometimes is they would cork the bottles. I don't know if they were sure there was a haint in there. I don't know how you tell if there's a haint in a bottle. I don't know. Um, but they would cork them and then throw them in the water somewhere to be washed away. They also believed that putting the bottles on the trees would bring luck. They'd make the trees bloom and they were just a general protection. So there you go. Now, it is said that if you are passing a bottle tree or bottles hanging from a tree and the wind is blowing and you hear that little woo sound, there's hates in them their bottles. <laughs> so yeah, that has nothing to do with physics, y'all. You hear a bottle whistling, there's a hate in there. You haven't finished your coke and it's whistling just just cap it just cap the bottle <laughs> but anyway that is that is what they believe so it was kind of eerie and i mean some of this has been put in literature and whatever just to kind of reiterate that southern tradition basically the haints and bottles are like a roach motel they check in but haints don't check out so uh, you know you you want to i guess have a lot of milk of mine bottles Coke bottles, and they can be clear, they can be any color. Um, I guess they could be beer bottles, whatever. So now what you see is people actually building, you know, the bottle trees because they're, I don't think, trying to trap furies, but maybe they're, it's just a, it's a folk art type thing now and it's very popular and you'll, you go by and you just see a bottle tree. A lot of times they will not put them on the actual tree, but they'll build like an iron tree or, you know, there's different ways you can get, hey, you can get on Pinterest and find a lot of ways to build a bottle tree. They'll put them close to the front door. Now I, I'm not big on that. It's just, it doesn't really go with my cottage. So if I were good, gonna do a bottle tree it would probably be like in a garden spot almost like a scarecrow and kind of you know put the bottles up there I don't know but so what do you think um do you think you would do a bottle tree have you ever heard any haints in bottles furies I want to know is this something that you would put in your yard and um you know for whatever reason my last question is this Okay, when these hates and furies are meeting at the crossroads, what I want to know is, don't like they tell each other, hey, you know, Bob, he got trapped in a bottle about a mile up the road. Stay away from bottles and trees. Stay away from hanging bottles. If you smell bacon, run. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe hates aren't friendly. Maybe furies don't communicate. I, I don't know. But I'm kind of thinking after all these, you know, thousands of years, they'd be getting a clue by now. Just kind of like a gin. Why are you going to jump in that lamp? No, stay out, stay out, be free. Or not. But anyway, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't really want gins running loose, so I, I would try to trap them. If I really thought there were furies that I could put in a bottle. Um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this little lesson in some Southern tradition. And by the way, I actually saw where there is a bottle tree ranch out on Route 66. I would love to go on Route 66 sometime, I think. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But anyway, there's a whole bottle ranch out there. So, you know, but you will mostly see the bottles in the South. I, I hope you enjoyed this. Next time, we are going to be talking about another Southern tradition that's a little spooky. 
and even more spooky than the Furies. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'm so glad you stopped by. If you want to, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye!